anyway, guys. Today is... I would have expected to come here, and I think a lot of people would have expected me to come here, for those who view the channel, to be in a brighter mood for what yesterday was. The start of March Madness. And I'm not really feeling that way today. I'm going to explain why in a moment. Welcome back to the Robbie Basil Show. My name is Robbie Basil, ESPN broadcaster, analyst, production assistant, uh, two hosts of two different podcasts. Y'all already know who I am, though. If you if you're, if you're new here, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Hope everyone's day is going good. Hope everyone enjoyed the last couple of days with Mar opening the first four of March Madness. You had other stuff going on that I have to talk about. Because I completely forgot that the international break actually produced some competent gameplay. So, we're going to talk about some of those matches at the end of today's video. But we are starting with March Madness. And hopefully I get this to work again. Because we are starting off with March Madness. So, let us begin. And yes, we'll be sharing the screen. I'm sharing my screen, of course. I'm going to be doing this more often uh, if there's like a game, a couple of games I want to talk about. So we'll just be scrolling up and down. Let's go. We're going to go game by game in the order they occurred in. So we open it up with with Michigan State. I actually don't think you can see it. I don't think you can see my screen now. I don't know. I've never done this before. We have Michigan State against Mississippi State. That's the game I have highlighted right here. Michigan State, a team that dominated with the three ball. That's the main reason they won. They were just more consistent all around. They had played a phenomenal game against Mississippi State. They deserved it. They did everything they had to do. Don't doubt Tom Izzo. They went out and won 69-51. to Then, the first upset of the tournament. Duquesne beating our friends from BYU. BY who, as some would say? But BYU went out and lost to Duquesne 60, 71 to 67. BYU, they had their chances to come back, but Duquesne just found a way. That's the best way I can put it. I was on a train. I I didn't even know I didn't even know how it happened, to be honest with you. But it's just one of those moments where a team finds a way. One for one on the 11 seeds. More on the 11 seeds in a moment. Because you see our friends from North Carolina State there on the right. And a notable upset that we get to talk about later. Proceeding that insanity, we have, of course, we have North Carolina who took care of Wagner. Wagner, a team that I have to applaud. I can't applaud them because I don't have my mic stand with me. Here, I'm back home, of course, just for this one video. But they were in the game for actually a decent amount against a good North Carolina team. Despite Wagner only having seven players, they put up an okay fight, and they lost to North Carolina 90-62. to It's North Carolina-Michigan State, exactly what I had in the top left uh, of this region. One versus nine, just how I expected it. Towards the bottom, we had Nevada, who just completely sold against Dayton. A Dayton Flyers team that I thought was down and out of it, but they said not so fast, some Lee Corso type thing. And they went out and came from behind to beat Nevada 63-60. to I did not get that game right. So feel free to roast me in the comments. But listen, our, the Dayton team deserved a win at the end. It was back and forth down the stretch. But at the end of the day, Nevada just completely blew it. And Dayton and the Flyers move on. The Atlantic 10 is inevitable. But then we had Arizona... Long Beach State earlier on in the day. Long Beach State, who were in the game for a surprisingly long time against one of my Final Four teams in Arizona. Arizona now will face Dayton, a game that a lot of people had that I didn't. Of course, I had Arizona against Nevada. But listen, I like Arizona in that matchup a lot. It's going to go back and forth a little bit. I think the Flyers will be able to push the pace, cause a little bit of issues for Arizona. But I think the Wildcats should get it done against the Flyers. Bottom right, of the next region, we had Texas take down Colorado State in a surprising, well, not really surprising after the first four, but a very low-scoring affair for Texas. Very concerning, a concerning low score for the Longhorns, 
They're going to be going up against Tennessee, who absolutely decimated the MAC champions of St. Peter's. Good riddance to them, because they should not have been here. I think most other... The flaw with St. Peter's, and I will talk about this with the MAC in a moment, is that they were such a bad offensive team in the MAC this year. Let me back up on the screen. That they had no business playing Tennessee. Because Tennessee's good offense was one of the main reasons on why they beat St. Peter's. St. Peter's is one of the worst offenses in the MAC. They didn't. Tennessee didn't really have to do anything. All they had to do was just somewhat defend and score 65 points, and they were going to win. They went out, got it done right away. Fair play to Tennessee. They're going to be playing Texas. Y'all already know I like the volunteers in this matchup over Texas. Tennessee proves it, that they can score. They can defend. They can do a lot of things right. They had Vescovy. They have Connect. They have a lot of good other players. I like that duo a lot. I like Tennessee winning that matchup. Towards the top, let me scroll up a little bit. For you guys, we had South Carolina collapse against the Oregon Ducks. The Ducks went help me get go for two for two on the 11 seed so far. They advanced to play Creighton, who absolutely dominated Akron down the stretch. Oregon Creighton, which I did have correct. So I'm two for two on the round of 32 games for this particular region. But you guys know I really like this Oregon team, of how they're just, they're just able to find a way. Oregon had, I don't remember how many points Kusnard had, but they had a guy, Kusnard, who had like 35, for, oh, he had 40, last or like something like that last night. So fair play to them. The Ducks went out and beat the Gamecocks. The six seeds are all frauds. You already know, already know how I felt on most of them this season. I had all 11s over six seeds, and... Listen, that's worked pretty good for me so far. Kansas, Samford, you already know I'm waiting for that at the end. This one broke my heart. McNeese State getting absolutely decimated by Gonzaga. You already know I did not expect a full-on domination by Gonzaga. And I think with how many people doubted this Gonzaga team, they're like, hold up, wait a minute, something's not right. Us being doubted? The hell do you mean? And they took it personally and absolutely dominated McNeese State. Gonzaga wins by 21, and they advance to the round of 32, where we will talk about, like I said, Kansas is going last, as they should be in this conversation. Iowa State beat South Dakota State. They just destroyed them. And Washington State, who got benefited by a couple late ref calls, went out and beat the Drake Bulldogs, a Drake team that took them down to the very end, but at the end of the day, I, I just don't know. The refs didn't really help out Washington State at certain points, but you'll hear my my thoughts on referees in a minute. But Drake, there is down, there is out of it, and had too many cold stretches down towards the end of the game. Washington State didn't. They went out and got it done. They they will be playing Iowa State a matchup. I didn't have because I had Iowa State playing Drake. So fair play to Iowa State and Washington State. Congratulations on making the second round. To the right side of the bracket, we have only one result. We have North Carolina State beating Texas Tech. Who, baby? The, the, the 11 seeds were just balling. I love it. You saw a lot of good physical inside play from North Carolina State, which is why I have them beating Oakland by 30. But we'll talk about Oakland in a minute because that's supposed to be Kentucky. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. North Carolina State's presence, too much presence on the inside, low post. I love it. I am loving what I see out of North Carolina State. The magical run that started a week ago, over a week ago now, back in D.C., is continuing here in March Madness. And I'm all for it for North Carolina State. They are balling, and they deserve it, and they are right here, and they're playing Oakland. Which makes no sense, but here we are. Oakland. You, you know when like they say it's like... Here's how I'm going to put this. Remember in Claudio and Chance of Meatballs? Where it was just raining everything? Like pancakes. Which I would love a pancake. I love pancakes, by the way, for those who don't know. like Pancakes, sausage, and then like steaks. And all this other random stuff. That is how this game went. 
for Oakland. Just chuck up threes and hope they go in. It, it's like, no, a better way to put it is like, when, um, like, like a quarterback's throwing deep to wide receiver, they're like, oh, yeah, he's over there somewhere. That's a better way to put this. Because Oakland, let me find his name. Hold on. And as I am finding this person's name, because apparently I didn't have it loaded up, uh, comment below what upset you, what do you think the biggest upset will be down the stretch besides the ones from yesterday? Comment below. Um, also, uh, comment below how bad do you think my March Madness bracket is? And, or, one better, comment how long your March Madness, how, in terms of how many hours it was that your March Madness bracket was perfect. This particular one got me to like, pfft, well, I was six for six, and then Dayton happened. Or it's seven for seven, and then Dayton happened in this one. I'll talk about more about brackets in a minute, but they have Jack Goki? Goigi? I'm bad with names. He had 32 on 10 for 20. All threes. If you're talking about raining whatever, this dude is doing it. Okay. Raining threes are all over the place. And North and Oakland will face North Carolina State on Saturday night. I am all for this. I think North Carolina State's going to kill them because this is what happens with the some of the of the very low seeds that went. And they get killed in the second round unless you're St. Peter's. So listen, fair play to Oakland. They made the second round, and they're probably going to get killed by a very good and surprisingly good NC State team. Sorry about that, guys. Need some water. And now, this. You know what? You're, we're not even going to have the screen up for this. We're not even going to have the screen up for this. Put me on full screen. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the first rant of today. We head to our friends with, I believe this game was in Salt Lake. Where was this game? You gotta love how bad I am with this stuff. So we have Kansas and Samford. This game was in Salt Lake City, Utah last night. I stayed up. I watched the whole thing till one in the morning. It sucked. I hated it. But it, it was just a hodgepodge of everything. You had big leads, a come from behind attempt. Ref ball, it was awesome. Unfortunately, the end was not what people wanted. This is where I get... Okay, so here's my thoughts on this. Samford should have never been in this game at all. You're playing Kansas, which makes you question Kansas too, by the way. But we'll start with Samford. They should have never been in it. They lucked out a lot. They did. And... I'm not going to discredit their comeback attempt. It was an attempt. That's the best way to put it. But they should have never even been in this conversation to begin with. They were down by as much as 17, I believe, at one point. It was an absolute blowout at times. Kansas could never get the job done. That's on Kansas. We'll get to them in a second. But I just don't like the fact that people are saying it's the ref's fault that Samford lost. It's not. Because you can't point at one play that lost you this game. You can't. Because if Samford, if, listen, if this game, this is one of the reasons why I don't like this. This is my rant, by the way. Samford. My problem with Samford was this. You're down 20. Okay. 17 to 20 points. You are getting decimated by the superior opponent. Okay. You make a comeback attempt. You do get some help. And then you get screwed by one late call. You lucked, to, you lucked out to get to this point and couldn't finish the job of that you shouldn't even have been in to begin with. Why are you complaining about this? You got lucky to be in this spot. Okay. 
So that's one side. You proceeded to just be – because Samford was not better than Kansas for the first 34 minutes of this game. You cannot say anything otherwise. It was Kansas, it was Kansas, and then for like 30, like a minute, Samford was better maybe, and then it was Kansas again. Like, this Kansas team looked great. They did a lot of things right. Down the stretch, they didn't. But they can learn from their mistakes because they kind of have to if they want to beat Gonzaga. They have to. Here's my rant. This is the real one now. The officiating at the end. Actually, no, let me go back to one more thing. So, my point for this is simple, what I was going trying to get at. Don't blame one play for Samford losing. Blame them for the mistakes they had earlier on. Blame them for going down 20 or 17 or whatever it was. And, and then they tried to make a comeback. Don't blame the refs at the end because of one bad call that may have, that some believe, ruined the game. Oh my God, they did all of this. Oh my God, they did all of that. It's like throwing this water bottle against the wall, which I'm not going to do because I don't want to dent my wall. I, like when I hear all this stuff, it's like you, you really want to beat your head into a wall. It's stupid. Why do you do this? Why? They should have never been in this game. Get that through your freaking head. The majority of the country understand that that freaking Samford should have never been in this game. Never. Like, now to my officiating thing. The refs at the end. You have to take multiple things into perspective. They weren't that bad until the last play. Now, the only reason why I'm making this argument because I have, this is an old one, but I have one of these. I know what it's like to officiate a sport. It's not basketball, but it, it actually does apply very well. Higher level referees, I'm not getting there, but like you get what I mean. You have to take multiple things into account where the referee called the when the foul was called. And I take multiple things into account. One, referee's position. There's a breakaway. Referee's by the table when he calls this foul. He's actually right in front of Bill's self, I think. So he calls the foul right when he was going down. Because I'll give him that. The fall looked actually pretty bad off right away. And from the from the angle that he had, from what I was thinking, was it looked like he swiped and did get a little bit of the wrist. From that angle, at least. So, I'm, what I'm glad is that the referee who actually, or like everyone's the popular camera angle is for this. The referee over there didn't call it, which I think is good. That's a positive. Take a positive from this, that that ref didn't call it, because then we'd be all screwed. But, this is my thing. Everyone in the country was in that comment section. Whether you looked at it on Bleacher Report, CBS, March Madness's Instagram page, everyone was saying Samford got robbed. The officiating was bad. Now I'm going to take a uh, a little page from one of my one of the people from my ref development team, one of the people who works in ref development. If you are you really think that you can go out and make a call like that. In that type of moment, maybe not in a March Madness game, but say you do that in an under-17s game or whatever, under-19s game in AAU, go learn how to become a referee. Like, I'm tired of this. I have sat in this chair, in multiple other chairs, across the East Coast, and from... Actually, I should have done a video on AC. If I was in Georgia, I was in Jersey, here, New Rochelle... I have talked about this once a month, it feels like, for the last almost a year now. I am tired of it. All right? If people across the country think they can make a call like that, not just in this sport, not just in basketball, baseball, soccer, football, whatever, go learn to become a referee 
Only then will I take a comment like that seriously. Because I don't. They have, most people do not know what it is like to make a call in that moment. They don't. Now, do sports, some sports around the world and their officials constantly screw up and ruin parts of the game? 100%. This is different because it's one moment that happened one time. This is not VAR, okay? Like, this is different. If you really think that you can make a call like that, where you clearly see that could become a no call, and that's a clean block from the angle he was, and you really think you can get up and down a court like that, be my guest, learn to become a referee, not sit in a chair like this with no refereeing experience, and complain to kingdom come. Don't. It's stupid. Learn to... What it is like before making a comment like that. I can. I have my badges. I have my jerseys. I have everything you need for this. Let me show you. These are badges. Let me get all of them. I'm actually missing one. If you can see, these are all my ref badges. Other than one because I have my, my new one in my bag. I know what it's like to make calls like that in soccer. And it very much applies to basketball as well. This is a stupid argument. Stop making this bigger than what it was. I don't think this call was the entire reason why this game was ruined. It's the public's reaction to it that ruined this game. This whole dilemma overshadowed some of the craziest results and some of the craziest ends we have ever, I have seen in a long time. Talk about Duquesne BYU. The second game, damn it, was like the most, one of the weirdest ends I have seen from BYU not being able to get a rebound. You go from that. You had struggles from the fighting Illini against Moorhead State. Sure. You had the upset with NC State over Texas Tech. Oregon. Then you had Oakland. Don't overshadow the entire incredible day of basketball with this one play. It is stupid. Learn to be a referee if you really want to make this argument. Go right ahead. If you want to ask me, I can put you in contact with people. Stop making this more about the refs because it wasn't. It wasn't. If they were totally bad for the entire game, understandable. This is different because it's one call. One uno singular call that you that the public says was a said ruin the game. Shut up. It's that simple. Like they have no idea how difficult it is to ref a sport. Some games are easier than others. But at the end of the day, stop making this stupid argument. Enjoy the game. Know your role. Know what? Some, was it Travis Kelsey? I don't know. Someone said this perfectly. This is to everyone who complains about these referees. Know your, know your role as a fan. Shut your mouth. Done talking about referees today. Breaks my heart every time I have to freaking do it. Next sport. Next. All right. We'll be heading to soccer now to have me not be pissed off anymore. And we are actually, no, I am getting pissed off again. Perfect. We have the United States who played Jamaica. Three to one. In an absolute, let me get this up right. Because I, this is, for those who don't know, I am starting to use like graphics more or less pull up ESPN stuff and have all this up for you guys. So let's look at the numbers. Okay. And there's a lot of things immediately that concern me. Well, one, let's talk about what would actually happen. So it's USA Jamaica in the CONCACAF Nations League, a game that probably nobody watched. It was an Arlington. Decent crowd, actually, for a Nations League semifinal. 
with between the United States and Jamaica's B team. And Jamaica scored within 60 seconds. They did. Terrible pass in the corner, and Jamaica scored immediately. The United States proceeded to do absolutely nothing until like the 80th minute when I turned the game back on. Because the XG showed it. The stats showed it. If you are telling me we are the United States, the Estados Unidos, and we do outshot Jamaica, outshoot Jamaica 25-6. to six. Good for you. Hold on a second. Let me make sure I do this right. Hold on. Mr. Burhalter, do you want a participation trophy for out shooting the Jamaican B team like they're under 23s? Do you want a trophy for that? Congratulations, you earned one. Because this was horrible. The United States, on the last kick of the game, when everyone was moving forward, scored in the 96th minute. On the last play of the game. In regular time. The United States proceeded. To. Well it was an own goal. I don't think it should have been an own goal. But. Sure. The United States proceeded. To absolutely dominate. Extra time. One out and one. Three to one. After extra time. To beat Jamaica. And advance to the Nations League. Semifinals. Now. Overall, right, I have a lot of problems with this. And you see the other result. We'll talk about Mexico in a minute. We are the U.S. national team. The national team of the United States of America. The greatest national team on paper that we have ever seen for the red, white, and blue. Do people really expect to take the U.S. seriously after barely being able to beat Jam the Jamaican B team after all of the injuries and suspensions they have? Here's a couple players they didn't have. Damari Gray, Leon Bailey, Mikel Antonio. They were carried by Andre Blake and a bunch of players you've never heard of. An island nation, which don't discount discredit Jamaica. They're, they are a great team. Okay, they're go I believe they're playing in freaking Copa America. Like, this is insanity now. The fact that I have to talk about this. So, like, we remember talking about Copa America. We get to talk about the Copa America in a couple of months. But, do we really expect this U.S. MNT team... To do anything in Copa America if we're barely able to beat Jamaica? I'm dead serious about this, by the way. I would bank more. I'm serious about this. I would bank more on the odds of Canada beating Argentina right now than the U.S. getting out of that group with whoever the hell, with Uruguay and everyone. Because for those who don't know, I love that bullet... That, Really think people are sleeping on Bolivia. So, I re they can really make a move if the, U the U.S. is going to screw this up. Because, listen, if you really think the U.S. is going to do anything now, you're going to be mistaken. The U.S. in a group with Panama, who are not that great, Bolivia, and Uruguay. If the U.S. got any more difficult of a draw, I would not have banked the United States getting out of this group. And it shows with the way this team played for the first 90 minutes on last night. It does. Listen, I love the U.S. team. They have a lot of players I love. Pulisic, McKenney, Reyna, Aronson, Matt Turner, who is a Connecticut native, by the way, and played against my Iona Gales. He has that infamous moment that went around during the World Cup. 
And But at the end of the day, there's still multiple glaring holes with the national team, particularly at the number nine. Temporarily, those questions may have been solved by the absolutely on fire Haji Wright, who scored a brace and led the United States national team last night. The question for the U.S. going forward, what are you going to do to make people think different about this team? Because right now, I think a lot of people are banking on the U.S. to go out early. I really do think, even if the U.S. gets out of the group, U.S. soccer is going to have to take a hard look at themselves and say, wow, we are a bun- We have a lot of nepotism in this organization. What are we going to do now? Do we sack Greg Berhalter? Or do we want to have all of our fans turn on us in the World Cup? It's in their court again, and I hate this. Because I really want, all the fans are turning on U.S. soccer again, which is perfect. And I love it. I am supporting the fans because U.S. soccer has no idea what it's doing. Six years later, after losing to Trinidad, we still don't have it right. For the most part, we have a good ton of good players. Yeah, I mean, a freaking 14-year-old just got signed by Man City a couple days ago. He's 14. He's doing scorpion kicks in training. He's amazing. I don't even know his name. But research it. 14-year-old signed with Man City. USA. We have a future. The golden generation of the U.S. is continuing. But you have to at least put an effort with the USMNT to think that we actually have a chance because the US doesn't have a chance against your juggernauts if you re- no one's taking this US team seriously and they shouldn't with Greg Berhalter as manager but the US is a mess no who isn't a mess Mexico they played great last night I was able to watch a little bit of the early on in this match I had multiple TVs on and while Mexico only had six shot attempts which is concerning for even for them it's concerning the problem is simple as i try to get the ah whatever um mexico had less possession basically what happened was mexico did nothing for like half an hour and then they decided to you know score goals edson alvarez quinones and orbanin pineda uh three goals for Mexico, they deserve the win. They own despite only having despite getting outshot eighteen to six, they were actually the better team, I think, than Panama. Because after they scored the third, they just they just stopped caring and just let Panama shoot, essentially. And Mexico will be playing the United States national team on Sunday night for the, the CONCACAF Nations League final. I am excited. I will not be watching this game because it's at 9.30 at night. But I would recommend it. It's actually going to be a decent watch. Saturday, though, is what I'm actually more intrigued for. Because it's the final matches of qualifying for the Copa America from Frisco, Texas tomorrow. We have Canada and Trinidad. Costa Rica, Honduras. The surprise team that has actually any form of a chance is, of course, Honduras. But at the end of the day, Honduras is probably going to get absolutely annihilated by the Canadians tomorrow. But you still don't know who candidates they're even, even going to throw out on the field. Listen, they get thrown on an A-team and still probably struggle with Trinidad. Costa Rica-Honduras, I am banking on this Honduran team. Because Costa Rica, they don't score enough. They also usually don't play great on American soil. Well, and while Costa Rica is undefeated against, they have not lost a match in Costa Rica against the U.S. national team yet, for now at least, they struggle sometimes in the United States. And I think we're going to see that on Saturday in a match that needs a winner, a match that will send a team to the Copa America. Who will win Costa Rica, Honduras? I'm picking Canada to win the first one. I'm going to go with my boys from Honduras to qualify and then get absolutely killed in the Copa America. But listen, at the end of the day, they should be even happy to get to the Copa America to begin with. Finally, our last topic, 
or second to last topic, but the last one that will need a screen being shared is Euros qualifying. The final round of Euros qualifying is here. Let us begin with the insanity. We will start with Wales, who beat Finland four to one. They didn't make it. I'll go. I'll quit. I'm going to ra- rapid fire through some of these games. Wales beat Finland four one. It wasn't close. Brooks scored early on. Nico Williams got a second. Puki scored for Finland and gave them some hope. A Finland team that honestly really collapsed down the stretch in a group that was very easy. They didn't deserve to be here. They lost to the Welsh. Poland beat Estonia. Another team that didn't deserve to be here. Estonia, who qualified through their Nations League group. They came out of, like, Group D or something, or Group C. I don't even remember. League C. I honestly don't even remember at this point. They went down early, got a red card. That was basically it. Uh, Poland won 5-1. Good for them. Iceland beat Israel 4-1. Another game that was not really that close. Israel scored early on. But then Iceland ripped off four straight goals, and Israel got a red card in that span as well. And Iceland beat Israel 4-1. to one. one of our protagonists, Kazakhstan, our boys from Kazakhstan, they got killed by Greece. I was very sad when they lost to Greece because I love that Kazakhstan team. They will be back for World Cup qualifying. Uh, they could be a dark horse for World Cup qualifying. I'm serious. Greece thumped Kazakhstan 5-0. Uh, yeah, they got dominated in every facet of play. It was not close. Next game, goodbye, Kazakhstan. You tried. They really tried. But they couldn't figure it out. Ukraine beat Bosnia 2-1. to one. Closest game of the day, I believe. But this Ukrainian national team, they go, they go down early, but they find a way to do it, courtesy of that old man, Yaramchuk, and Dobvik. Dobvik? I think that's how you say it? Uh, scored the winner for Ukraine. Ukraine is going to the final of their path. And Georgia beat our other protagonists in Luxembourg, two to nothing. Courtesy of, I'm gonna try and say this name. All right, chat. Hold on a minute. Zvidas v Zvidas v. That's an effort. I don't know. I totally got that wrong. Uh, a red card in between the two goals for him by Chano from for Luxembourg sealed the deal. They will be playing, I believe, on Sunday. Uh, for no, it's not. <laughs> See, this is where my knowledge comes into play, chat. I don't know when the next games are. I actually don't know. There we go. It's on Tuesday. So here are the finals of the Pats. Georgia's playing Greece. Ukraine's playing Iceland. And Wales is playing Poland. My, The match to watch for me is Wales against Poland. Because honestly, Wales or Poland can beat every team here. Not name themselves or their opponent. Georgia, Greece. I'm, I really like the Greece team. But Georgia's playing at home. I think that one's going to go to extra time. I'm going to back Greece. But don't be surprised if Georgia wins. Ukraine's playing Iceland in Poland. Ukraine's winning this. Iceland, who are the surprise to even be here, still, are. I think this Ukraine team, they're going to have a lot of backing around the world. They're going to have such great support. They're going to beat Iceland 3 to nothing and advance to the Euros, I believe. And then the game at the bottom, we have Wales against Poland. So I love both of them. But playing in Cardiff is very difficult. I don't want to pick them. I'm picking Wales in extra time. I'm going to 1-0 Wales in extra time. Sending us to absolute insanity for the reaction. Because that could be the last time we see Robert Lewandowski in a Poland shirt. I don't think it is. But listen, it's one of those moments where you just have to wait and see. Finally, today, we will be talking about Formula One. We are in Australia this weekend, ladies and gentlemen. And qualifying is like, at like 2 in the morning, I think, tonight. I don't even know when it is because I really haven't paid attention this weekend. But there is a couple of interesting pieces of news. New news. I sound like Jason Kelsey. I hate this. I hate it. But listen, it happens sometimes. You know what I'm saying. But the race... Qualifying is at 1 in the morning tonight. Uh, honestly, I would probably turn off. I can't go to sleep. 
The race is at midnight on Saturday night. Honestly, that's probably going to be an intriguing. Uh, I will be intrigued because, listen, at the end of the day, who knows what's going to happen in that race? Other than I'll, I'll watch like the first five laps. I love that Australia track, but it's just too late of a time. There are pits, bits of news. Max Verstappen has like is trying to. How do I put this? Max essentially said that he'll probably play out till the end of the Red Bull contract, which makes sense. He wants to be one of the greatest drivers of all time. I think if he wins an eighth world championship, any gets anywhere close to Hamilton, he's going to be the greatest driver of all time, or one of, even though the era he's racing in isn't very competitive. But, listen, at the end of the day, he just needs to keep winning races, and that's about it. Lewis Hamilton made interesting comments about the Mercedes car, which i got to make this comparison now. And I love that I get to make this comparison, by the way. So, hold on one second. So, at the end of the day, this is very similar to the Lewis Hamilton exit from McLaren. Now, the reason I'm comparing it to that is because Hamilton with McLaren had a couple of issues with the McLaren car down the stretch. I believe he had a couple of retires at the end of toward down the stretch that helped, that didn't lead him to winning the world championship in his last season with McLaren, which then he got to Mercedes. I think we're going to see something similar, but worse for Hamilton because that Mercedes car does not look very good. It doesn't. I don't even think it's going to fit the Australian track at all. I mean, it shows with how bad he looks in practice so far, but. It's a very concerning moment for Mercedes fans. Some are saying on Instagram that some people are commenting like, yeah, Hamilton doesn't care anymore. Of course he cares. He loves the sport. He would have retired if he didn't think there was hope for him left. I just hate how he's going out with Mercedes because that car is so bad. It's so it, it's terrible. But listen, I, you only hope that Mercedes makes a McLaren-like comeback from last year. And finally... Before we go into some predictions, uh, Alex Albon crashed and is now using Logan Sargent's car, which I remember the old days where you have to, like, have a spare. I don't know how you don't have a spare car. Like, what the hell? Listen, I don't even know with William Williams anymore. Albon had a terrible crash and destroyed his chassis. They didn't have a replacement chassis. So they're just kicking Logan out of the race, essentially. So I felt I feel really bad for Logan. Granted, Logan wasn't going to score them any points, but I don't even think Albon is either. It would be very fitting, though, for Albon to crash. And then they blame it on Logan Sargent. <laughs> Listen, it's very possible. But on to my predictions, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the race, the qualifying, I'm going to go with Max, and then Leclerc, and then Carlos Sainz. For qualifying for the race, there were a couple people that like surprising with pace in a race. I'm going to go with Verstappen. I'm going to go with Carlos Sainz, Leclerc, Piastri, Lando Norris. Top five. P6, I'm going to go with Alonso, then Stroll, then Russell. I want Danny Rick to score a point, but I don't hear, but I don't even know. Sergeant, by the way, qualif uh, drove really well in practice. He actually drove a fairly respectable lap. It was only about five, four tenths down on P10, so fair play to him, but I'm worried for him now. But yeah, those are some uh, race and qualifying predictions, quick fire predictions, due to how long this episode has been so far. On that note, that'll be the end of today's episode of the Robbie Basil Show. Actually, hold on. One more comment. One comment that I got asked about and I need to break down for you guys. And we are going to actually a different part of the country. Because I almost forgot that this even happened. We are going to Turkey. Now, the Turkish Super League, in recent months, have been very controversial. And while I do think that this other story is more controversial, and I'll talk, bring it up real quick, this is what I'm talking about. So this is the first story I'm talking about. 
You know how the U.S. Open Cup, this, uh, this is before I'm talking about Turkey. You know how in, like, the U.S. Open Soccer Cup, like, MLS teams have tried, like, get out of it? There's only eight MLS teams in it this year. The USL is winning this cup, damn it. But the ultimate upset, El Farolito FC, an amateur side named after a chain of burrito restaurants in San Francisco, beat the, the Portland Timbers 2, an MLS Next Pro side, to advance to the second round. The burritos beat the team from what these self-proclaimed burger league. Is, are, bur- are burritos better than burgers? Comment below, but that's one thing. And now we head to Turkey. The issues in Turkey with fans and violence on the football pitch have gotten, been out of this world. Something, things that I have never seen before. Now, I've seen in videos how bad it is in some parts of the world. There are some countries that I will not name just because, like, I don't want them to have, like, a negative – people to have a negative perception of them. Because the the games in some of these countries are so good, but sometimes the fans, due to their passion and everything, get in the way. And by the way, I'm not talking about a Big Five League. Some of the fans in the Big Five Leagues, like Marseille, they're, like, really passionate. There's some other clubs in Germany. But when you go to more east – that's where some of the more fan violence is. And that's what's unfortunately happening in Turkey. There's one incident I'm, I'm forgetting about. Uh, one of the countries I was talking about earlier, I'm just going to mention them because I think I don't want them to have a negative con- people to have a negative connotation of them. It's Serbia. Now, Serbian football, I've been able to watch a little bit of it. It's awesome. Serbia, really cool. But when some of the incidents that they have there, I mean, they've had to suspend games a couple of times. It's not... That's where it can get a little bit out of hand. But Serbian fans, I love them. They're really passionate. They love their national team. They love their clubs. It's awesome. Some of the, Sometimes, though, in other parts of the world, there's no country that does it bad. Like, it gets really out of hand. I, at least from what I've seen until a moment like this. We are going to a match between two of the best teams in Turkey. Trabzonspor and Fenerbahce. A match that I was supposed to bring up on Tuesday. And what happened was, in short, fans from uh, Trabzonspor rushed the field and started to f- were about to fight players after a result against Fenerbahce. Let me pull up what even the result was because I don't even remember. I don't know, don't know like what the score was. I'm gonna load it right now. Fenerbahce beat Trabzonspor 3-2, 87th minute winner by my boy Bachuayi. But the big issue was, of course, the fans rushing the field at the end. People rushing the field for something like that, I denounce. Of course, you have to denounce it. My issue now is that I don't think... The Turkish FA is doing enough to care about it. But what this should be doing is showing other federations around the world on what can't happen. I think they're actually learning pretty well. But the stupid thing is, from this match, a Trabzonspor fan, his name is Hassan. I'm going to try and get this right. I'm not good with the Turkish names. Hear me out, all right? Hassan Çetinkaya, who stormed the field wearing a mask is claimed to be the real victim after being punched by Fenerbahce's bright Os- Osai Samuel. Now, I believe what happened was the Traps and Spur fans were trying to rush Fenerbahce after Fenerbahce got the, grabbed, grabbed a late winner on the road. But it fully looked like he was trying to square up one of the players, particularly bright Osai Samuel. Now, Osai Samuel... Defended himself very well. I'll give him that. But the fans said, my aim was to tell the players to go to the locker room. I was hit from the other side and fell to the ground. I was kicked while I was on the ground. Afterwards, I became the real victim. I hate this. Okay. This is education time with Robbie. This is your education of the day. I wish I could have like a a giant board just right here. Do not rush the field while the players are still on it for a negative reason. Like, Mar- like when you're storming the court for basketball, 
this is what like very similar to what happened this year. Our fans rushed to court and people got injured because of it. This is 2,000 times worse because it's for a different intent. I don't like that the fan, people are maybe even trying to give the fans sympathy. Let's read the comments, shall we? (laughs) This is perfect. Squared up, made fists first, got beaten in front of thousands, is now preaching a message of peace and praying, playing the victim. What a weekend. Perfect comment. I love this dude. Shout out to Ginny Kachi on Instagram. Beautiful comment. Buddy gonna rush the pitch and then play victim. Can't make this stuff up. He's not wrong. Shout out to j 35marrell Mary. Mary? I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce some of these names. But since then, Fenerbahce fans created a mural of the incident on which it shows the player getting, like, fighting the fan. Beating up the fan, which honestly you gotta respect it because no, I mean that's not the right way to put it. I'm gonna respect the fans from this because the other opposite fan tried to play the victim when the when the he got destroyed by the Fenerbahce player. So to support the Fenerbahce player, I'm all for it. That's just something else to happen in the world. Now this is the end of today's episode of the Robbie Basil Show. Thank you guys so much for watching. I had a lot of rants today. Maybe this goes on Insta, get the clip on Instagram. Who knows? I'll have to take a look at it later. Hope you guys enjoyed. Enjoy the rest of March Madness. Remember what I said about referees. Maybe that goes into your conscience a little bit. As a little bit of another thing to look out for. I'm Robbie Basil saying so long. Enjoy March Madness. Enjoy the other things going on in sports throughout the weekend. Next week, the MLB video might get a bit delayed. I don't know yet. You will see based on the title of Tuesday's video. I probably will delay it to Friday. So you will see probably my full preview on Friday. But once again, just make sure to follow the Robbie Basil show on Instagram. So you don't miss out what will be the next episode. Once again, I'm Robbie Basil saying so long. Enjoy your weekend. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye, everyone.